1340-96.5 KVGC after a uh, week. I don't know if I want to call it a week's vacation or not. You ever taken a trip in a small vehicle across eight states in seven days, Douglas? Uh, yes, and I, I can say eight states because there was uh, gee, uh, you caught me off guard, but there's, there's a location where four states meet. And so I count, we, we went there <laughs> once as a kid. The Four Corners. The Four the Corners. The four corners. So. And so there's four right there, but, we, you know, that kind of counts, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but, yes, we drove it. As kids, you know, you, you have a trip with the family on the vacation, and you think you're going to go, everything's going to be Disneyland, and everything's going to be a lot of action and thrills and all of this. We're in the back of the car for, like, you know, eight hours a day um, going through Yellowstone and, uh, and and all the different parklands and Zion National Park and and then to driving to uh, all you know, through the country and going to uh, Carson City and then Virginia City and all the various areas and uh, as kids and Banff and uh, and just it was just we, my, my mom would do these trips and holy smokes there's no GPS either you're looking at a map and the map you know making a left turn here a right turn there and unfolding the map and. And he had one radio, and Dad listening to his Muzak, you know, this yep. elevator music. I remember distinctly a couple of trips like that. Not so much fun as a kid. Well, let's just start off by saying um, that's one of the things that I miss the most. Well, I'll tell you. Let's start off by doing something else. Douglas Viviani of Everything Old Is New Again. Douglas, good after, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. How you doing today? Good. I'm okay. Doing well. All right. So now let's get back to our conversation. Um, I missed the map. I missed the map. I, di- I didn't know where I was. Yeah, I'm looking at the GPS screen on the truck as we're driving. My son bought a brand new Ford Ranger, which is not your dad's Ranger. It's not that little tiny truck anymore. It's very similar. Ford just reintroduced them. They're about the size of a Chevy Colorado, so like a mid-sized truck, four-door. You know, So Teresa chose to sit in the back. I asked if she wanted, but she chose to sit in the back. So she was in the back. Joey wanted to drive the whole way, so I let him. And I'm in the passenger side. But I'm a guy, you know, I'm a kid from the 50s and 60s when we would go on trips and I would stop. You know, when when we would stop at gas stations, I would go into the gas station and get a map of the state or the area, and I would follow along where we were. I With couldn't... no outliners, no yellow outliners. You did it with your finger and, uh, yeah. you know, and unfolded that map, and it was like a two-by-three-foot map or whatever. And we're able to fold it right back up again and make it flat perfect. I miss that. I couldn't, and I, 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 I realized at that point, I told Teresa one night in the hotel room, I said, you know, I'm getting old. She goes, yeah, why? I said, long for the times that... I don't have the map. I don't know yeah, where I'm at. Because you had some achievement, too. You know, you'd follow it along, and you'd use a yep. pencil or whatever, and, yep. and uh, uh, yeah, it was some fun to it. But there was also, there was also a dark side where you... You know, you, you, if you couldn't read that map right, or if you were driving alone and everybody else in the car is asleep, you're pulling over and <laughs> can't figure out what it re- Yeah, it's a skill to reading a map like that. It really is. So one of the, I don't want to beat this to death yeah. because I've talked to, I, yeah, I've talked on the air about it, but I think the next long vacation that I would like to do, and maybe I could check in periodically with you and David, is Teresa and I both want to take some time and drive out to Chicago on Route 66, because oh, be there are still portions of 66 that exist. And and just before we left, I saw a news uh, item that there is a group put together nationwide uh, to preserve and possibly rebuild sections of, of Route 66. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be great. And if you're not familiar, my grandfather did that uh, a number of times to tell us about it. We did a little bit of it. But it was in the '60s, so it was a little, you know, still there, but not as in '70s, not as as prevalent. Basically, riding through Main Street, America, through Main Street, America, you know, go to Mayberry to Mayberry to Mayberry for thousands of miles, right? Yeah, yeah. And what a great thing! You'd have all, the, and on the side of the road, you'd have all these different attractions, and it's when the cars only went like 50 miles an hour tops, you know. Um, and you enjoyed the scenery, you enjoyed the ride, and uh, coming up to this town, and you'd, you'd try there specialty which was the cherry pie or something <laughs> yeah or you see the 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 tp uh tp motels you right stay in those are the trading posts or the, so uh so let me see it goes see st louis 
Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City, Amarillo. So we went through we went through uh, Oklahoma City, Amarillo. We went through Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, we didn't go through Flagstaff. We did go through Winona. Uh, we didn't go through Barstow or San Bernardino, of course, because we didn't. We actually came down through Nevada on ninety five. Right. Uh, but I tell you what, I did do. Did have my picture taken on the corner of Winslow, Arizona. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and and believe it or not, the they the city has parked a flatbed Ford pickup truck right there on the corner. Do they have a big sign of the Eagles album somewhere? Well, there's just a the, not not really, but but it talks about the there's a society a uh, you know Wins, uh, corner of Winslow, Arizona society that preserved it. And anyway, All so. Right, listen. That's what it is. All these little attractions. You see, did you see the the largest uh, uh, ball of uh, string? Large... No, we didn't see that. But we did see the largest crater made by a meteorite hitting the Earth. Visited Maybe. that. Uh, you know, and who could who could miss the UFO museum? Well, that's what I want to hear about in Roswell. I mean, that was had to be. I saw pictures and. And it looks like this place is uh, the five-hour admission, right? And it's what's it got? All these attractions. We've got the the uh, U, U, uh, UFO. Um, well, let's see, the aliens from the from the autopsy and the aliens of the formaldehyde. And yep, yep, stuff yep. like that. And what it, you know, and, and Joe was my son. Joey was was he was very skeptical. He was like, "This is going to be, you know, stupid and a, you know, tourist trap." And he said, "You know, this isn't too bad. This is kind of uh, interesting because it it it's really done well, and it's not. I I don't know if your brother has has actually been there or not, or if he's told you about it, but it's it's done very well and very professional, and it's a little kitschy in some places, you know, but most of the time it's done very well." Very, and then it gets well. you, you know, a couple of pictures you could take, and then you it just gets the the ball rolling to just yeah open that portion of your mind to just have some fun thinking about different things and what possibilities there are, and and uh, coast to coast comes to mind, and and uh, so are you prepared now to fill in for George Nuri, you know, and he's on his next break. Well, maybe uh, maybe Doctor Viviani the next time you have <laughs> him on. And he, uh, you know, you want him to come talk about UFOs, and he can't make it. Maybe I could fill in for him. Cause That's he's, a good idea. The, the, UFO, the UFO extraordinaire. Uh, I don't know what we would say. How would we call you? The enthusiast extraordinaire, something like that. Okay. Your title. Next, next to the you know, best thing next to the real thing, something like that. that could <laughs> the be next a, best thing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> anyway, it was fun. Uh, Grand Canyon. Uh, I tell you what, you've got to take. Uh, you have to take Leo and um, Angelica to the uh, Grand Canyon. It was just spectacular. We didn't go on the glass bridge. That's on the west uh, okay. rim. We were in the south rim. We went to a town called Williams and then stayed in, in Williams, which, by the way, was the last town bypassed by, by uh, the freeway of Route 66. And we took a train. We took a train up to the Grand Canyon, spent the day at the canyon, rode the train back, and the hotel had uh, three meals for you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they were good. It was good. It was, it was a good time. Now, we, we, when we were kids, I was maybe about 11, we got on a donkey, and they had donkeys walking on a, the edge, like a path that was literally like three feet wide, and it went one donkey in a row holding onto the tail of the one in front, something like that, or just at least following that closely, maybe 10 of us down into the into the valley, a little bit into the valley, into the uh, Grand Canyon. Do you, you see tours like that? It was the most frightening thing that I've ever done. It's like riding the Big Sur, you know, if you're familiar with that. We saw the, uh, we, we saw the stables where the, where the, they're actually mules. Right. Where the mules live, and, but we didn't actually see anyone riding down um, the, the canyon. I wonder if it's. If we were just out of our minds to do that back then, not realizing the possible danger, or if it's really not dangerous, I don't know. But you're literally on the precipice as you look down. Well, didn't 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 you and your brother, you know, look back up at your parents sitting there on the rim, waving to you, thinking, "What the hell did they get us into?" <laughs> not until it was over. I mean, remember, you're seven, you're eleven years old. He was thirteen. Uh, my sister was eight, 
and um, and we were we loved it. We thought it was the greatest thing. And then we got out of there and we looked down and kind of said, "What did we? Re- what did we just do?" You know. <laughs> but as a parent, I mean, as 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 an adult, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, that was just. A, but one of those memorable things it was worth the drive that day. That's for sure. Interesting thing too is they they warn you before you get off the the shuttle. Do not. Do not get too close to the edge. Don't go over any of the barriers. Don't. They lose people every year. Well, these these characters taking the selfies. Have you seen this? You go online, take a look at people that died taking selfies, and they show you show you the, like the last picture of the person. And uh, and yeah, they're over. They're just they think it, they're invincible or something, and they're doing a selfie. Look at me on the on the side of the cliff. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that's the last thing they do. Right? Unbelievable. So, hey, you seen good movies while I was gone? Whew, I'll tell you. Um, we haven't seen any good ones yet. Oh no, I should say we've seen we saw Aladdin a couple of weeks back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We which talked was about over that. the top. Yeah. Good. It was surprising, yeah. very surprising because what a hard job to follow up on on um, you know on the on the on the uh, animated one. Sure. And Will Smith did a, a nice job. He he took a different turn with it. Didn't try to compete with Robin Williams and put his own spin on on the genie and. Boy, it was a good movie. It was really I'm surprised. I did not want to do it, but this is one that was very attuned to uh, the young uh, gentleman in the audience. It was, you know, finally a Disney movie about princesses, if you will, or that kind of a thing. But it had action, action in it. It had thrills. It had chase scenes. So it had a lot for a little boy to like. So Leo was into that, but he cannot stop talking about yesterday. Have you, have you seen the ads for this movie? Yes, I want to see that so bad. Yeah, the reviews so bad. Are, are pretty good on it so far, just the early, early reviews. But that's the, you know, the reviewers, you don't really know what the general public thinks. There's usually a, a different feel for it. I think it's going to go over real big. And if you, you don't know what it is, it's basically a guy that wakes up, he's a musician, a failed musician, and he wakes up and there are no... There's no sign of the Beatles. No one in the world ever knew of the Beatles, and he, except for him. And he goes ahead and becomes very famous by recreating, and in his world, creating Beatles music. And I think it's a great turn because it, it's. Well, let me put it this way: My son is seven. He loves the Beatles. We saw um, Ringo. We're going to see Ringo again this year. He's coming to Long Island uh, to a small amphitheater that's outside. It's going to be a nice little event. How does a seven-year-old, well, how, this band is 55, 56 years old. How is it that this band is still popular to this day where there's a movie made of it that people are talking about and is basically you know, revitalizing their music? Uh, I don't know about your sons, but again, Leo's seven and, and he's enthralled with them. I think that, uh, you know, it's just, a, Jellica goes to school with uh, 11, I'm sorry, uh, 10-year-olds. And, and there's quite a number of them that are big Beatles fans. How was that possible? Did that happen when we were kids? Well, we would have. It would have been like Glenn Miller or Frank right? Sinatra. It, it, or, you it know, didn't really happen. Like didn't think about it. Now, I grew up in, 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 in our house. My parents listened to all types of music. We listened to everything from you know jazz, big band, not so much country. I don't remember country as a kid. I don't remember country until maybe high school being aware of it. Right. But, uh, you know, the standards, they call it, I guess they would call it uh, MOR music, um, you know, middle of the road. Right. Type. Like, like you were saying, your dad driving down the road listening to his, you know, music in the, in the car. Yeah. I, there was you no, know. like, in this, let's say the 70s, go back to the music from the 1920s. You knew about it and all that, but you didn't have... The albums you didn't hear on the radio, you weren't, you know, into it. Your friends didn't know who they were. This is just an amazing tribute to a band, I think, that, uh, like them and I, have to acknowledge the, I mean, it's pretty Back obvious to, to say, but the, the talent, yeah. talent and unbelievable ability to write lasting music. It's incredible. Back to my vacation for just a moment. <laughs> yes. Went to Graceland. And we can spend a show on that because we were yep. running out of time here. But I'll tell you about, you know, I didn't, I didn't appreciate Elvis uh, until very later in life, just before he passed away. I, I discovered, I always thought Elvis was, you know, just some, you know, from the movies and stuff. Because I was too right. young to really remember him as a, his first run as a, and then, you know, but then after 
the 68 comeback tour and then into the early 70s and stuff. That's when I really started to discover. But just unfortunately, just before his death is when I realized, you know, this guy was a very talented artist. And I hate to admit that, that I didn't think that. Yeah, and he wasn't uh, our guy, so to speak, in some no, ways. Like, no, weren't there to no, the, 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 yeah. really hit the scene. And those movies weren't really a great impression. Right. But yeah, right. when you listen, just turn an album on and listen to his music. And the quality of that voice, boy, that was unbelievable. Listen, if you had a chance to sit down and listen to an Elvis album or or an or a cassette of the news, who would you listen to? You know what I'm saying? We would have <laughs> chose the news any day, any day or that. Hey, what's up with this week's show? <laughs> well, we're finishing up a little bit where we've been talking about some uh, baseball, a little here and there, and baseball-themed uh, shows. This week we have Art Shamsky. I don't know if you remember this guy from the 1969 Mets. He was their right fielder besides Ron, Ron Swoboda. So he, what he did was he's kept in touch with all these uh, players on the team that he's been with, and it's the 50th anniversary of the 69 Mets. Do so you remember the 69 Mets? I'm sure. Was it as impressive where, and rememberable a season where you are as it was here in New York? I don't know. I was in the eighth grade, and our teacher brought in um, a, 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 a TV and we watched that. That's back when games were during the day. And right. we watched the game. Uh, remember, they were in the afternoon or early morning. I can't remember. They're after lunch or in the. But anyway, we watched the World Series in school. That's amazing. Yeah, it probably would have been day. a one o'clock, two o'clock game. So by you would on the East Coast. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it was just it was like a miracle team. One of these loser loser teams, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, they come and win, you know, the World Series. So he uh, then took a trip. With Ron Swoboda, Jerry Kuzman, and Bud Harrelson, talk about road trips to deep into the uh, Napa Valley where Seaver is now with his in wine country, and he's suffering a little bit from uh, from Lyme's disease, so he's not getting out too much. So he wanted to bring a little celebration of the '69 season to Seaver, uh, so he documents that as well as as what happened during that season in his book. And uh, we're going to talk about, after the miracle, the lasting brotherhood of the 69 Mets with Art Shamsky. There we go. Douglas Viviani and David Cohen tonight at 6 o'clock, again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, anchoring our evening programming here. Douglas, have a great uh, show tonight. And you're going to go see yesterday, what, tonight, tomorrow? It's actually, yeah, it's, it's the next weekend. So next weekend, we're definitely okay. See it. Probably before next weekend show, we'll give you the review. Great. All right. Hey, we can talk fireworks maybe next next week too absolutely because that that was one thing again back to my trip you know you can't uh, <laughs> you can't turn a flashlight on in dry grass here in california without you know lighting a fire so fireworks are taboo all we have is sparklers and little right. you know man you but can have a sale all over route 66 right oh buddy <laughs> they got mortars and rockets and from a kid that loves fireworks, oh my God! If 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 we weren't flying home, I would have had some. Uh, you know, I think I might have had contraband coming back across the border. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> have a great show tonight. I enjoy. It.